Okay, so today we're looking at 7.1. Um, it's part of a new chapter and it's on haemoglobin. So we need to consider what's different from GCSE. Now at GCSE, we always knew that haemoglobin was the uh, pigment in red blood cells that carried oxygen from the lungs to respiring tissues. What we didn't consider was how does it know when to pick oxygen molecules up and how does it know when to drop them off? So we need to consider the shape and the structure of the haemoglobin molecule. Now, of course, that's dictated by the base sequence of the DNA. That tells us which amino acids and which sequence of amino acids we're going to have. So, sequence of amino acids. And you'll remember from your earlier work in AS that that means the primary structure of amino acids. The sequence of amino acids then tells us how it's going to fold due to the hydrogen bondings. And of course, that is our secondary structure. We normally get an alpha helix or a beta pleated sheet. Okay, and then from there, our tertiary structure explains how this is going to fold back on itself. And of course, that depends on where all the hydrogens are sticking out, which depends on the sequence, which depends on the base sequence. So these are all held together in shape by hydrogen bonds. So that is how it folds back on itself. In other words, it's tertiary structure. Of course, the next thing then is the quaternary structure. And that what that is dictated by is one or more polypeptide chains interacting together. So more than one polypeptide chain. Pep, polypeptide chain. So let's have a look at how those four polypeptide chains interact together. We actually have two alpha chains that are the same, and we have two beta chains. It just means that this is the same as this one, and this one is the same as this one. And of course, they interact together because of all the hydrogen bonding that takes place. Within each of these polypeptide chains, they have a heme group. It's a prosthetic group. It's a false group because it's not made of anything organic. It's literally just made of iron. And each one has its own heme group. And each one of these is able to bind one oxygen molecule. Remembering that oxygen moves around in pairs. So we get one molecule of oxygen oxygen binding there, one there, one there, and one there. So that therefore means that every heme molecule can carry four molecules of oxygen. Next thing to consider is in a red blood cell. Remember when we draw a red blood cell from the side, we're drawing it as a biconcave disc. If we were looking at it from the top view, it would look circular and it would have an impression in the middle there. Now, haemoglobin, there's loads of haemoglobin. It's not just one molecule of haemoglobin in a red blood cell. The red blood cell is packed with haemoglobin with the four polypeptide chains interacting together. So that's an important point to consider. We also have to consider the new words we use when we're talking about haemoglobin and its ability to carry oxygen around the body. The first thing that we do is we switch the word concentration of oxygen for partial pressure of oxygen. It means exactly the same thing in essence, and you might have learned about it in chemistry. Its units are measured in kilopascals. Uh, word that we use with um, talking about the attraction of haemoglobin to oxygen is the word affinity. And affinity just means that it's 
its ability to like, its ability to attract. The other words that we use are the words to describe how haemoglobin binds with oxygen. We don't say binds, we say it associates. It associates with oxygen at the gas exchange surface and it dissociates at respiring tissues. The next thing we're going to look at is how does the haemoglobin molecule know to bind when it binds and how does it know when to dissociate and drop off the oxygen at respiring tissues. So the first thing we have to do is consider a graph where the partial pressure of oxygen increases. And on the side, on the y-axis, we're going to have the saturation of haemoglobin. Now, percentage saturation. Now, what happens is the haemoglobin, for human haemoglobin, it takes on an S-shaped curve. And what, we, what we're thinking of is we're not talking about one haemoglobin molecule because clearly for one haemoglobin molecule you would either have 25% saturation, 50% saturation, 75% or 100% saturation and that's clearly not what this curve shows. So when we're looking at this graph what we need to imagine is that we're talking about a sample of blood. As the partial pressure of oxygen increases what we see is the sample of blood becomes increasingly saturated and we see a tailing off here and we see a slow increase here but certainly between here and here it's a really rapid increase. Now the reason for that is because you've got your four polypeptide chains and what happens is the binding site on the iron on the heme group is hidden by the, by the polypeptide chain. As you slowly increase the partial pressure of oxygen on one of these molecules, the binding site becomes uncovered. The polypeptide chain moves and the binding site is therefore available. When the oxygen then binds on here, it causes a conformational change here, which then changes this one, which then changes this one. So because it's quite difficult to bind the first one, once we've got that change, it becomes really easy to bind the second, the third, and the fourth. So this change is called positive cooperativity. Now you can see that on the graph, it's really difficult. You have to increase the partial pressure quite a lot before you get the first haemoglobin molecule to bind with oxygen in your sample of blood. You only have to increase the partial pressure a small amount more to get two and three haemoglobin polypeptide chains bound with oxygen. So we've just said that this causes a change here, causes a change here, causes a change here. So how do we now explain that the fourth one tails off? Okay, and the answer is, in our four polypeptide chains, if we imagine that all these dots are oxygen, then great. This one is going to bind onto here, that's that one done, another one's going to bind onto here, another one's going to bind onto here. By the time you come to your fourth polypeptide chain, it's actually a bit more difficult for the oxygen to bind. And that is literally just because all these other oxygen molecules have interacted with the heme groups on other haemoglobin molecules and the concentration is just that the chances of this one binding here are limited and that's why we get that S-shaped curve. Okay, going back to this graph where we've got the partial pressure of oxygen on the x-axis and the saturation of haemoglobin up the side, we can draw in our S-shaped curve and remembering takes a big increase in oxygen to get the first one to bind. The second and the third bind quickly because of the conformational change. 
which is positive cooperativity. And then the fourth one takes a bit longer just because you have to increase the partial pressure of oxygen such a lot to ensure the likelihood of it bumping into the heme molecule and binding. So how does that change when you look at other organisms? Well, some organisms, for example, um, a worm that lives in the sand, a lungworm, um, it lives in a burrow, a U-shaped burrow, and basically here it is, not doing very much, living a bit of a miserable life, and basically the seawater comes in, and in that time, the seawater circulates in the burrow, and the worm has a fresh supply of oxygen, so that's fine, but when the tide goes out, water is trapped in there, and the slowly the concentration of oxygen in the water gets lower, but the lugworm still has to be able to absorb as much oxygen from that as possible, even when it's starting to become a little bit anaerobic. So what happens there is different organisms have different haemoglobins. For instance, the worm in this case might have this kind of pattern. And all that means is that a lower partial pressure of oxygen, the concentration of oxygen, the amount it's able to associate with its haemoglobin is much, much higher. Another example of a different haemoglobin is fetal haemoglobin, the haemoglobin that belongs to the unborn baby. Now, the, mother from the, the blood from the mother and the blood from the baby do not mix. They form a, a, a meeting place in the placenta. And oxygen from mum's blood has to diffuse over to baby's blood. So baby's blood needs to have a much higher affinity for oxygen, oxygen than the mother's blood. And in fact, its curve is shifted to the left and looks like this. And all of that means is that at this partial pressure, fetal haemoglobin might have, I'm making this up, but it might have 75% saturation, whereas mum's blood, maternal haemoglobin, might be at 